isn't half nippy out there, I can tell you. I'm sorry. Who's winning? Well, I don't like to boast some, but I reckon I've got him cornered, and with my next move, I shall unleash the full might of my attack. <laughs> now, watch this, Eddie. It'll be interesting to see what he does. Checkmate. <laughs> Why don't you have your tea, then? Oh, yes, I'm very hungry. Um, what is that? Sandwich spread, and we saved you a sardine. Well, that's a fine supper, that is. Where's Mum and Joyce? Need you ask. Another church council meeting? Yeah, I tell you, it was a sad day when your mum joined that mob, I can tell you. Well, I'll say it was. I've got a good mind to go and tell them I'm jolly hungry. Eddie, are you mad? On committee evenings, that parlour, Eddie, is out of bounds. Now, you know you couldn't get in, that, in there without a signed chip from the vicar. Remember, they've got the whole parish to put the right. So if you want a proper tea, son, get it yourself. Why, oh, I could always wait till supper time. I wouldn't. They could be planning on an all-night sitting. Oh, pot. You know, it was bad enough when Ada and that Miss Finch were at it hammer and tongs the old time, but now they're made up, it's even worse. What do they find to talk about? Oh, oh there's always someone. <laughs> Mind you, I don't want to run the woman down. But if it is real mink, where'd it come from? Well, I heard that her husband sent it to her. Isn't he in the trade? We all know where he is. Yes, and if he'd sent her anything he'd made, it would be a mailbag. <laughs> Mind you, I'm heard it looks like a mailbag. Well, I wouldn't mind one market anyway. Oh, Merkel. I wouldn't. All right, then, let's get back to the job in hand. Yes, you're quite right, George. Who says a cup of tea, Etty? Who needs you ask? Not really. Merkel? Yes, please. Tea, Miss Finch? Miss Finch? Oh, yes. I agree with Ada. A nice medium green. Fair idea, dear, whatever are you talking about? The new colour scheme for the drill hall, wasn't it? We passed that motion half hour ago. Oh, I'm so sorry. I must have been dreaming. Indeed, you must. Since then, we've been up on the church roof, the youth club, the Sunday jive sessions, and Mrs. Fazakali's new coat in that order. <laughs> Goodness me, where have I been? I don't know, my dear, but if I couldn't stay awake during meetings, I wouldn't come. That eh? More tea, dear. Thank you, Ada. I'll do it. I wouldn't. You know what they say. I'll send you home in a minute. Supposed to be unlucky. Stuff and not. Whatever are you doing, Vera? That's a sugar basin. <laughs> Never mind. Etty can have that. She's got a sweet tooth. <laughs> Whatever's the matter with me? Yeah, you must be in love, dear. <laughs> Fiona, Etsy, don't mean no harm. Oh, now, come back, dear. This is a ladylike meeting. She'll apologise or I'll knock her block off. <laughs> Why shouldn't she laugh? I suppose it is funny, a woman of my age being in love. Well, that's not the point. There's no reason for her to go cackling like an old... Don't you mean you are? Oh, my God. <laughs> not at all. Why, it could happen to anybody. Well, I mean, just because you're a uh, widow. I mean, look at it this way. There's many a good tune played on an outfit. Oh, I will not have that one. Ada, I shouldn't have given way like that. Now, let me go. And not without my heartiest congratulations. Who is the lucky fellow? A fine, good man, Ada. Ah. And he doesn't even know that I exist. Ah, oh, the poor thing. Well, as I say, Joyce, friend your mother may be, but there are limits, and if one can't have a little laugh when one wants one... Well, I hope you're proud of yourself. Oh, and why, pray? Driving her out like that. I don't recall driving nobody out, as I remember she took the Ike. And do you wonder with you clod in all over her feelings? Poor Fiona. Poor Fiona, Martha. Watch it. Well, you give me the ump, you really do. Poor Fiona, this. Dear Fiona, that. A few weeks ago, you was calling her old Fanny Fusspot. Now, look here, Eddie. Come on, you two break it up. Meeting closed. Right. I can take it. Come, Murphy. Uh, I'll just keep it to you. Your cup now, when you're told. Is that how she takes it? Good luck to her. What's that you're writing? Just a minute. Meeting broke up in disorder. Absentee, Mr. Spoonful. Oh, well, the vicar never turns up anywhere. He's that absent-minded. You don't know what day it is. I'm not so sure. Perhaps he just doesn't like hem parties. I say, Mum, what, what's the matter with Fiona? Joyce, my dear, we have a human drama on our hands. You don't say? Yes, I do. Fiona is in love. Fi Miss Finch? Oh, no! Now, look, here, don't no. you start. You're as bad as our next door. Faultless and oh, oh, no, 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 Mum, I'm not. It's just... A Miss Fitch. All right. Well, it can happen to all of us, can't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, I suppose it can. All but... right, so she's the late starter. That makes it all the more serious. <laughs> like measles. 
I tell you, my heart fair bled for that poor woman bursting with unrequited passion. Unrequited? Mm. Oh, who for? If we knew that, my dear, it might help. Oh, poor Miss Finch. No wonder she was so foggy all through the meeting. Oh, look at her notepad, covered in doodles. I say, look at that. Oh, she's been writing her name over and over. Miss Fiona Finch, Miss Fiona Finch. Hello? Exactly. Mrs. Sebastian Spoonforth. Joyce. She's carrying a torch for the vicar. To me. That's a lot, son. Right. You know, no matter what Ma says, at times we are practically house trained. You're right. Well, after that little stint, I think I'll have a little lie down. Yeah, you might have waited for me. Oh, there's no waiting, son. The sink's all yours. Hello, my love. Match abandoned. And what do you mean by that? Well, we heard the front door slam twice, so we figured the rest out for ourselves. <laughs> you know, Mum, the more you think about it, the better it looks. Yes, you're quite right. Them two were just made for each other. We've got to do something about it. Ada, I am not buying no more ornaments. I wasn't talking about ornaments, and I'm not talking to you. If you must stand there, here, make yourself useful. Yeah, they're about the same age. They've got the same background, the same interests. Yes, you're quite right, Joyce. We must do something. Mind you, he's as soppy as a box of lights, but there, he can carry it off, and normally she is sharp as a needle. So that balances that out now. If we play our cards clever, we can make two people very, very happy. Uh-oh, I smell sulfur. The matchmakers are abroad. Quick, Eddie, take to the woods. It could be you. I don't know what you're talking about, but I do not like your time, Jim. Oh, come off it, I do. I know you are bold. All this scheming and plotting can only mean the one thing. It means that some... Poor bloke is going to wake up and find himself lumbered. All right, who is it? If you must know, it's the vicar. The, the vicar. vicar? Is nothing sacred? But he's a confirmed bachelor. Well, I think he should have had it confirmed in writing. I do not know what you're talking about. We're doing him a very great service. I am sure Fiona will make him very, very happy. Fiona? Miss Finch, to you. Oh, not to me, please. Miss Finch, but she's awful. Well, let's face it, son. The vicar's no Dirk Bogart, but that's not the point. <laughs> He's got one thing that he holds precious as nothing, and that's his freedom. And these scheming women is plotting to rob him of it. They're going to marry him up, just like that. Yeah, to Miss Finch. Oh, it could be the Dark Ages. Well, I am not going to... We are not going to let it happen. We're not? No, we're not. The, the vicar's no particular mate of mine. But he's a fellow man, and that's enough for me. So let his freedom be the symbol that we band together and we fight under to the last drop of our red blood. Oh, would you, Dad? What do we do? Well, we could take the direct manly course. We could go in at their living room and we could forbid the whole thing. Well, see you around, Pop. Stand still. Where is your red fighting blood? Under my lily-livered skin. And it's going to stay there. Isn't it marvellous? Here is a man's freedom at stake. And all this one can think about is his own safety. Righto, my love, righto. Or, or, of course, there's the sly, underhanded method. Well, now, that sounds more me. Right then. We watch their every move and we block it. And if we can't block it, we sidestep it. And if we can't sidestep it, we'll sabotage it. Hang on, Vicar. Help is Help me. coming. Ow! <laughs> Hello, Vicar, come in. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope I'm not late. Late? <coughs> oh, dear, am I the first? Oh, don't tell me that all the others have gone. Well, as a matter of fact, I have. You see, the meeting was yesterday. Was it? Oh, dear, oh, dear. I must have muddled up my dates. Yes, you must have muddled you. I'm so sorry. I won't intrude. Oh, you. bless your dear heart, Vicky. You're not intruding in the least. You just sit down there and I'll make you a nice cup of tea. <laughs> oh, thank you, but I, I shouldn't really. Oh, yes, you should really. Just a minute. <laughs> Joyce, put the kettle on. <laughs> you are very kind, but I ought. You see, if I should have been here yesterday, where should I be today? Sitting right where you are, having a nice long chat with me. <laughs> oh, should I? Yeah. Oh, well, I, I've lost my appointment book anyway. <laughs> well, that doesn't matter then. It's all right, isn't it? <laughs> I'll just go and make the tea. <sighs> Joyce, we've got him. The vicar, who else do we want? Oh, but we do, don't we? We want Miss Finch. Now, you finish making the tea and then you have a stroll round and fetch Miss Finch. Yeah, but what shall I tell her? Tell her the truth. The vicar's here and he wants to see her. Is that the truth? It will be by the time I've done. <laughs> I'm going to do some softening up on Mr. Spoonful, but I don't think he knows what he's missing. <laughs> it's 
Yes, the vicar's in the front room. Right. The vicar, the ma. The block. Now listen. <laughs> now, do you like it hot and strong? Yes, I do. Good. Because that's just how you're going to get it. <laughs> well, tell me, what are your views on marriage? Um, oh, marriage. Uh, why do you ask? Because I want to know. Oh. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, of course, marriage is an institution. More than that, it is a cornerstone of our civilization. Uh, a rock? A foundation, an integral part of our everyday life. Without it, our social structure would crumble like a like a. Like In a. other words, you're for it. Oh yes, yes I am. <laughs> then why have you never tried it? Hup, <laughs> two, three, four. Hup, two, three, four. Hup, two, three, four. Hup, two, three, four. Hup. Oh, Edward, have you come to join us? No. Oh, put the tray down, Eddie. Ah, uh, yes, Mum. That will be all, Edward. Oh, Mum, I was just you wondering if... You couldn't go now. Uh, the... Move uh... yourself! <laughs> you were saying? Oh, no, I don't think I was. Oh, indeed you was. You was telling me why you have never embarked on matrimony. <laughs> oh, I don't think I really thought about it. Vicar, I'm ashamed of you. When I think of all them young couples you have tied up in knots, and you tell me you have never even thought about it. Well, not so good. She's got him on the ropes. All right, men, we were left to counterattack. How? Like I said, the block, the sidestep would have been a sabotage. We shall try them all in turn. First, the block. We will go in there and we will change the subject. Good luck, Jeff. Me? Well, why not you? Ah, that would be bad tactics, son. I mean, you don't risk your commander in chief at the first sortie, do you, son? <laughs> well, I do. Good luck, Barton. Get in. <laughs> well, that's how it goes, Bart. Your turn. <laughs> Then take that great big barn of a vicarage of yours. Don't you go half bar me up there all on your own. Well, I really can't say No, that. of course you can't say. It takes other people to notice things like that. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> well, I, uh, I just dropped in. <laughs> Hiya, Vic. Uh, I mean, Vicar. Oh, how nice to see you. How nice to see you. Well, 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 well. It well, is well. a pleasure. It is it's indeed. been a long time. It has a long time. How long time. has it been now? I don't know. It was last Sunday. Oh, yes, that's right. Now, if you've quite finished playing Stanley and Livingston, I am having a private chat with the Vicar. Oh, no, I'm sure he could say. He could probably throw some interesting sidelights on this problem of yours. You did have a problem, didn't no, you? I have now. Never mind. The greater the odds, the greater the victory. And Jeff here is an example of my arguments. Example? Uh, exactly. Tell him how lonely you was before you met Joyce. Tell him how miserable you was before you got married. <laughs> a stranger in a foreign land. Nobody to talk to all day long but yourself. The miserable, lonely existence of a bachelor GR. Tell him, like you used to tell me and Joyce. Picture to yourself this grey, celibate castle. This military monastery. Grosvenor Square. Jeff's been in there for 20 minutes. What's going on? I don't know. They're just talking in low, mournful voices. Low, mournful. Hey, yeah, well, you get in there and see how it's going, oh, son. <laughs> Go in and collect the tea things. She can't hurt you for that. A harrowing story and very moving. Yes, it moves me too, because by the time I get to the end of it, I begin to believe it. <laughs> Could happen to somebody else. He saved his reason by getting married. What are you going to do? Well, I, I don't know. I feel strangely depressed. I begin to feel, you make me realize well, what, what a lonely man I am. Well? Jeff has been got at, and the vicar's just going down for the count. Right, it'll have to be plan B. Have you got that anvil? Right. Not yet, you lick! <laughs> now, when I give it a say-so, you nip outside the front window. When I cough once, you start clanging, we both shout fire. Is that clear? Clear. Off you go, Eddie. Eddie. Oh, Dad! Now what's the matter? It's too late. Joyce and Miss and watch it's coming out the park. Oh, the net is closing in. All right, plan C. Sabotage? Sabotage. Now, have you got everything laid on? Good lad. Now then, we'll, we'll let them in first, and then we get to work. And we'll have to work fast, because there won't be much time. Yes, Dad. Here they come. So you don't have to be on your own anymore, do you? No. There is someone who will look after you, isn't there? Yes. 
someone you know very well and who is very, very fond of you, isn't there? Yes. And you would like to see her right away, wouldn't you? Yeah. Good. Joyce Wheeler in. <laughs> Why, Miss Finch. Finch. You sent for me? Well, I must have. Oh, dear. Whatever's the matter, you don't require. Well, I don't feel well. It's my head. You'll look after him, won't you, Fiona, dear? Of course. Dear Vicar. Dear Miss Finch. Fiona. Fiona. What a charming name. I like Sebastian. I'd like some fresh air. <laughs> Why don't you two go and have a nice long walk? <laughs> there they go. I don't know how Mum did it, but... Oh, Jeff, what's the matter? She brainwashed him. She took <laughs> that poor little man and she brainwashed him. Oh, don't say that, Jeff. I'm sure they'll be very happy. Oh, I'm sure they will. You changed your mind? No, she brainwashed me, too. Goodbye, dear Ada. You'll look after the dear vicar, won't you? Of course I will. Come, vicar. Will I, I... Oh, you'll be all right now, vicar. Uh, vicar, your top coat. My top coat. Oh, yes, yes of course. Uh, you are. Yeah, it's a nice bit of stuff, isn't it? What you got in the pocket here feels like a bottle. Bottle? Yes, it did. Hello? So <laughs> <laughs> oh, purely medicinal, of course. Well, why not? But, 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 oh, but Mr. I... Spoonful, you are losing your paper. The Racing Gazette. Vicar! Oh, I <laughs> never knew that you was a betting man, Vicar. Aye, 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 aye. <laughs> Hello, what you got in? You don't care about your clothes at all, do you? Nasty old square pack that's cut in it. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Seaside postcards. <laughs> oh, you got some right corkers. Eddie, will you go away? You're too young. <laughs> well, good luck, mate. You know, I like a sporting pass. How? Wait! Sebastian! Oh, no, Fiona, don't go. Come back. Now, look here, explain yourself. Oh, no, I don't, I don't. Be I calm, don't. be calm. What's the meaning of this? Well, I, I, I can't explain it either. Where have I been? That's what I'd like to know. You stand your ground, mate. Oh, dear. Everything's gone wrong with me again somewhere. This is not my coat at all. It's the bishop. Away the past week. Yes, and whose fault was that? Yours, planting that stuff in the bishop's coat. The vicar was furious when he found out. Yeah, I gather the bishop wasn't too pleased either. Well, he didn't <laughs> have to give it back with all the stuff in it, did he? Honestly, I reckon that vicar wants a keeper. Oh, so now you're coming around to our side. I am not. I reckon what your mother and you done with was a diabolical liberty, and look where it's got you. The vicar won't talk to us, Miss Finch won't talk to us, and they won't talk to each other. Are you surprised? Uh, if you hadn't meddled... Me meddled? What about you, then? Matchmakers. That could have been a perfect love match if you'd left us alone. Oh, uh -huh. of course it could. She's bar me over him and he's not safe to be let alone. You said that yourself. All right. All right. It might have worked itself out, but you went about it the wrong way. of forcing the face, washing brains. I think mine's shrunk. If you want to be a matchmaker, girl, you've got to do it with finesse. You've got to be discreet. Tactful. Could you have done better? Well, he could have done any worse. All right, then, let's see here. There's Miss Finch and the vicar, two lonely arts asunder. How would you get them back together? How again? would I? If I wanted to, I could have them back together again like that. Oh. I would look for the lowest common denominator. What's that when it's at home? Well, look, they're both welfare workers, aren't they? I mean, when you're ill, it's them what comes round and sits on your feet and eats your grapes. <laughs> All right, well, just supposing that one of us was to fall sick with chicken pox or something. I would send the both of them identical notes, same time, same place, and they would meet at the bedside. Oh, I don't think that's very romantic. Ah, but it is, son. You just picture it. Two ministering angels on the same mission. The soft lights of the sick room. Their eyes meet. There is a smile of complete understanding. And two hands clasp above the pain-wracked shape in the bed. Well, you're not using my shape. I think it's dark, can't you? Well, I don't, Pop. I think it's a very good idea. Yes, so do I. You know what? Well, I think it might work. Why don't we try it? Just for the fun of it. Oh, yeah, let's. It would show the women up, wouldn't it? It would. All right. We'll do it. Right. It's easy. All you've got to do is to find someone stupid enough to deliberately go and catch chicken pox. <laughs> yeah, well, that shouldn't be too difficult, should it, Pop? <laughs> That's no trouble at all. 
Well, I'm not going to do it. Well, don't see why it's an Everton. No, 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 you keep your hands off me. Hello, whatever is that racket up there, sir? I don't know. I think it's your father and Jeff playing with Eddie. Playing for? I don't know. It looked like doctors and nurses. Oh, that something sounds like somebody's breaking down a door. Yes, they probably are. Eddie's locked himself in. I don't think he wants to play. <laughs> Still, keeps them occupied. Mm. Eddie, for once and for all, son, are you going to cooperate? It's not for our sakes, Eddie. Think about two sundered hearts. We know you're in there. Come on, Eddie, open up. Now, come on, we can keep this up as long as you can, son. Now, will you paint them dots on your face like a good boy? Eddie! There, now, what a difficult one. Yeah, but I don't see why it should always have to be me. Oh, all right, you nip into bed, son, and start groaning, and you go downstairs and send off them two messages, right. all right? Pop. Off you go. That's the idea, son. And Eddie... Son. What? Now, I know that your art is not in this, but remember, lad, you are a boy scout. And when Miss Finch and the vicar is one on either side of your bed, and their eyes meet, and their hands clasp, be prepared. <laughs> Come in, vicar. Good evening. I got your message. I'm sorry to hear that Edward has the chicken box. Shall I go up? Uh, no, no. You come right in here. Good evening, vicar. Good evening, Joyce. Where is Edward? Oh, don't you worry about him. But I've got a message. Yes, but that was one of my husband's little arrangements, and we've had my husband's little arrangements before, haven't we? Yes, indeed. Yes, yeah, so just you sit down and we'll have a nice long chat. Oh, no, not again, please. Mind you, I will give Ed Alfred credit for one thing. He had the right basic idea, but he will over-elaborate, so I've adapted it. I mean, who wants to hold hands in a sick room? Mm -hmm. Hold hands? Yes, and I'll give him credit for something else, too. You've got to be tactful, and here I am, being it. Uh, Joyce, will you go, please? Yes, Mum. Now, look, will you kindly note, I am not bullying, badger-eating, and neither am I brainwashing. But you are going to have a very pleasant little surprise, and I do hope you're going to enjoy it. Surprise? Yes. Why would you ask me to see Fiona! Yes? You do care? But, uh... Now, look here, Ada. Is this a... Sebastian. <laughs> oh, Miss Finch, whatever have you done to yourself? <laughs> Just one or two little improvements. Well, why didn't you do it years ago? You look an absolute picture. <laughs> Thank you, Edna. Now, perhaps we can go up and see Edward. Or was that note another trick? Well, yes, I suppose it was in a way. But look, we're all going to sit down and have a nice cup of tea. And then when I explain to you, I know you will agree I was acting for the best then and I am acting for the best now. I don't doubt your good intentions, Ada. But you're wasting your time. Wasting my time? Yes, you see, Sebi and I got together days ago and sorted things out for, for ourselves. Didn't we, Sebi, dear? Well, my dear, you sorted them out. Not that I don't. <laughs> in fact, I'd rather do. You sorted them out? Yes, quite satisfactorily, thank you. So, you see, you've no need to bother yourself anymore. But, uh, Goodbye, Ada. Come along, Sebby. You're taking me to dinner. Yes, uh, Fiona, I'm coming. Uh, Mrs. Larkins, uh, thank you very much for... Good night. Good See night. you now, Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry she told you then. Yes, <laughs> after all I've done for that woman, slaved me fingers to the bone to get her off with a vicar and she goes and does it by herself. Oh, there you are, you see, Ada, my dear. You know who your friends are, don't you? Oh, I could have told you what she was like, but no, no. You were blinded by that palette dance voice of hers, hasn't you? <laughs> Not that we can't all put it on if we care to. How did she do it? That's what I'd like to know. Who put her up to it? Well, I have to admit, dear, that I did tell her what she needed was the direct approach, and I did make her fashion conscious and put her right on the art of makeup. Anything else? Well, I did happen to mention it was leap year, so I suppose she leaped. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she asked, and I felt I owed her something, you know, for laughing. Oh, well, at least she can't take all the credit for herself. <laughs> you have to laugh, though, don't you? <laughs> Our chicken box was all for nothing. <laughs> I'd better go and tell him. No, let's have a nice cup of tea oh, first. Yes, well, you never gave me a chance to tell you that I really had the chicken pox. <laughs> well, anyway, you were the ones that wanted realism. 